A violent man is your second feature? Second feature. Easier or more difficult than the first one? Different. Different. Um, there's a difference totally, you know, it's the same set of skills. Um, still directing, acting, you know, dealing with backstory. It's the same set of skills, just different. Totally different subject matter. Um, I did fight scenes that I've never done. I, I never did action scenes or, you know, you know, three round MMA under, you know, fight ring, you know, MMA fight. I've never done that. So I rehearsed a lot and shot a lot of prep and prepped a lot to get to that. So it's a very different process for me than like Wild and Blue was, but at the same time, it's still the same, it's just making something different. You have Denise Richards in the yeah. film? Yeah. How did you cast her? Offered her to the part. She said yes. <laughs> I mean, yeah. What does she play? What's her role? She plays uh, a journalist um, who winds up dead. She, she interviews Ty Thomas's character uh, after he beats the local champ Chuck Liddell in a sparring match. So she goes to interview Thomas's character um, one thing leads to another, I'm not going to tell too much, but she winds up dead. Um, and the story kind of follows, you know, the consequences of like a man whose job is to be violent, who's perceived to the world as a violent man, because that's his job, that's what he's trained to be, that's who he is inside, and the world is telling him, you are who you are, and he's defending himself because he doesn't believe that's who he is on the inside. And then he becomes self-destructive and I'm not going to give away too much, but it's a murder mystery fun thing. So looking, I don't know when the, the film with Humphrey Bogart was, was it in the 30s or when was that? I think it was made in like 50s. Oh, 50s, okay. Yeah. Do you think the world is, is I know we're, without getting too political, is, is, has more become this way? Telling people who they are? Or, or it was more back then, especially if we're dealing with McCarthyism and things like that. I mean, do you think we've become more of a society of sort of like pointing fingers and saying this is who someone is w without totally knowing them? Or it was more so then? Well, I think we've always been that society um, because, you know, it's America. That's what America is. Um, but I think now it's different because we live in such a technologically advanced culture where, you know, you can kind of define yourself in a way through social media and Facebook. So it's a different type of resonance in the way that people view you and the way that you can let other people see you than it was in the 50s. But, uh, but I think that there are certain social obstacles that, that certain people face now um, that different people faced in the 50s, you know. If you were a Jew in the 50s and you went to a communist meeting for the rest of your life, you were canned a communist by McCarthyism. Now it's a different, it's a different, you have a different enemy. You know, there's a different people looking at you in a different way. Sure. But there's a sort of a modern day McCarthyism in that you can point a finger and say, this person's this, and they're sort of branded as that. And they may not be that. But, but so are there, without, you know, anyway, I'm getting too political here, but... I was just wondering because you you say that people are saying that he's violent and this is who you are and um, you know we're we're sort of in that space right now. Yeah, well, I, it, a violent man's more about you know people eventually sometimes become what their job is or people think that you are what your job is you know because his job is a fighter, so the rest of the world must perceive him as being violent when he's actually not a violent man. He's just a man who made a mistake, maybe, maybe not. But, um, you know, you're also, the story's really about several violent men in a violent situation, in a violent job. I mean, every character in the film faces the obstacles of violence internally and externally, because that's their job, that's the world that they live in, that's the MMA world, that's the universe that all these characters exist in. It's cutthroat, it's a business, there's money involved. Right. So that's where the tone of a violent man comes from, is because this one character's job is to be violent. So therefore, as far as the police are concerned, he must be a violent man. Did you study the, the real-life backstories of a lot of MMA fighters or even boxers 
um, just in terms of like how they grew up and maybe what prompted them to get into the sport? I did. I did study some. Um, Thomas and I brought a lot of his personal backstory to the character um, and some to the script and people that influenced him because I always think that it's really important when you work with actors for them to bring their own backstory, for it to resonate with them so you have their character connects a little bit more with the individual who's playing the character. What did you find with the backgrounds of a lot of these MMA fighters? Um, I found that a lot of them, um, you know, some of them came from dysfunctional homes. Some of them really came, were bullied as a kid. Some of them were really like, just wanted to be tough because it's an insecurity. Um, but. Yeah, I think everybody's different. 